This video is sponsored by Big Boy Gaming. Follow the link in the description below for all of your card gaming needs. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Edison Club. Today I'm joined by my good friend Ethan Slaughter and we're going to be going over and ranking all of the Edison Earth Monsters or at least all of the relevant Edison Earth Monsters into these categories. First thing we have Earth Shattering followed by this rocks followed by the boulder is conflicted <laughs> <laughs> followed this up is the by best thing I've ever came up with <laughs> yes that one that full credit for that goes to Ethan that was his idea it's it's perfect it's perfect um, followed by mud pie and lastly dirt so yeah let's uh let's jump right into this thing with the first one being elemental hero gaia Oh, what can I say about this card? I'm a hero player. I like this card, but is it always in my extra deck? No, usually Fortress Dragon is in my extra deck instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's cool. Um, his effect doesn't come up really that often at all. Like, I think that most of the time when this card is made, it's off of Miracle rather than off of Future Fusion. Now, yeah. of course, like in Fraser's case or someone else using Future Fusion to send Dandy, you know, I totally get that. You're going to reveal Guy off of that. But yeah. um, he doesn't. He doesn't. He really doesn't come up a lot. Like, there's not like I know that there's like a lot of Earths on this list, but like you don't really play Earth monsters in tandem with heroes and often. And then like, what are you gonna do? Brain control their drill warrior that they happen to leave up, and then and then and then the miracle. miracle fusion. Yeah, <laughs> like I think that I've made this the most by going against zombies, and they just summon Mizuki and pass, and I'm like, cool, <laughs> mind control, give me that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oddly enough, bad. this card, um, I've seen this guy come up to get over Spirit Reaper before. Yep, yep, yep. Because he targets. So, That's very yeah. nice. Where do you um, think he should be? I definitely think he's above, like, Mud Pie, for sure. I think the boulder is conflicted. <laughs> okay, so about halfway <laughs> down. I think that's a good place. I think, uh, yeah. because, like, whenever uh, you activate Future Fusion, you probably are conflicted. Do you want AZ or do you want Gaia? Do you want to send your Dandelion, you know? Yeah, um, the twenty six hundred defense comes up sometimes. I've I've used that to my advantage, and you know, I've warded off of Stardust or other things, so that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think the only thing that that bites about this is like he requires a elemental hero monster. Yeah, if he was generic like hero. AZ, he would be so much better. Oh, for sure. Like he would be like he would be a lot better, a lot more played. I feel like as a, the elemental hero part kind of sucks, but like it is what it is. Um, yeah, I think his stat line for attack, obviously, it's as low as it is because of his effect. You know, you're supposed to gain attack off of the effect. So, but yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a I good think place that's good for him. him. All right, next up we have Exploder Dragon. It's so good. It's like so good. Like <laughs> it is good. I, I've been watching like some people do replays of dragons, and like this guy just getting over anything, not worrying about like damage, is actually pretty crazy. I think he's really good. Yeah, you know, he's, it's like, oh, you have an armor master. I really don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, like it's, nice. It's, it's Better wonderful. have deep prison. Yeah, for sure. Like he, he's so free. Like I love that when I was playing dragons, I would just summon him off mass dragon, like in the battle phase, my battle phase. And just crash into whatever I was trying to get over. He he outs a lot of things, and he's he's a solid ass card. Like I mean, like for what he does, I, I definitely think he is more of a this rock. Like he he rocks. I think so too. I definitely agree with that. All right. Next up, we have Spell Striker. Spell Striker doesn't really see a lot of play in Edison. No. So here's my thing. So when we were doing this list, and I was like, you know, looking at all the cards, like I did choose like a little like. A, a couple like you know cards that aren't played as much or maybe previous formats that are like still within the card pool rather like for example like spell striker uh bazoo you know there's a couple oddball ones on here but that was mainly because if you take away a lot of those we don't have much to talk about there aren't too many earth monsters that are really really good yeah that's so, true um but i i, I have a personal connection with this card just because i love perfect circle and that is your boy in perfect circle bro he is fantastic in perfect circle but when i first started playing diva hero this was my 41st card and it was to either be you know like 
oh, they booked uh, whatever I was trying to synchro with, so I would just special summon this guy, or he'd be my easy route into a level eight. Like, I'd normal summon Diva, special Gilman. They're like, oh, they're going into a level five. And then I go, uh, banish a spell from Grave, special spell striker, go into Thought Ruler. And they're like, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I did not expect that. Also, he's an Earth. <laughs> they have a reason to play Gaia. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. And he can attack directly. Yes, yeah, that part is actually very nice. I've, I think I've done like over 3k with him at one point because <laughs> like they didn't have anything and they just kept drawing like <laughs> bottomless or like torrential and I'm just like poke, 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 poke. <laughs> but the uh, the level the level three aspect is definitely very relevant to uh, like I think if he was any other level, I don't think it would be as good as it is. Um, but that being said, I in not seeing the, any play really. <laughs> Um, yeah, unfortunately. I think that it'd probably be like a mud pie card, honestly. All right, down to mud like, pie with you. I don't think it's terrible. I just it's an extra summon and attacks directly. Cool. Like there's some niche things you can do with it. You're probably always gonna have a spell card in your graveyard. It's like most of the time, at least. That's true. So, I just uh, you know he's he's not played enough. Yeah, yeah. Maybe somebody will cook something. I would let him cook. You know, I'd I'd love to see something like that yeah all right the next one i feel like needs no introduction this is goyo no, guardian it, no, it needs no introduction it needs no needs no discussion like it's earth yeah. shattering in every single way possible like i don't even know if we should even talk about it <laughs> like, yeah i know it literally like gets best. banned the next <laughs> format gets banned yeah it's, it's my thing is like what were they, they were like oh yeah stardust is a level eight, you know, it has 2,500 thought ruler, same set, 27. Uh, yeah, let's just make a level six, 28, and let you steal a fucking monster. Okay. I know. Like, when we were looking I, at stuff, like, for the Flamble deck, I was like, bro, all the level eight synchros suck. None of them do anything, like, that's really good outside of, like, Dark End. But I was like, look at Brio and Goyo being level six, being broken. They both end up getting banned. So crazy that they made those level six. Yeah, no, like, I was just like, what? Like, like I was talking to my, uh, my friend the other day, and he was like, yeah, I remember being at the Sneak Peek. People were, like, you know, so hype about Stardust. They were buying ulti Stardust like it was no tomorrow. And he was like, I was picking up Goyos for fucking 10 to ulti first Goyos for $10 a piece because no one wanted them. He ended up making, like, eight, he ended up getting, like, 18 by the end of the event that he went to. And I was yeah. just like, holy fuck, dude. Like That's, that's insane. Like, like he went for a weekend and came back with eighteen fucking goyos, and I'm just like, bro, you 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 cashed out so hard. Even even <laughs> back then, like you know, like that's just such an insane card, man. Like, yeah. I I will give you that. There's not a lot of level eights that are like really really impactful. Like I think Thought Roller is very slept on. I think that card's wild in simplified game space. He's so stupid, but Goyo, dude, the control aspect, just like it's it's ridiculous. Like it's just so good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There are so many times where, like, you can Goyo, like, one play that I love to do playing Lightsworn is to Goyo someone's Armageddon Knight, use the effect, and dump my Necro Gardener to the graveyard. Yes. It's so dirty. It's it's so cool when you ha when you take a monster that has, like, a summon effect. It's wonderful. It's like, oh, yeah. this, this is the thing. I can do this. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely yeah, earth-shattering earth for him. Shattering monster. 100%. And, yep. and the next one as well. Like, what yep. the fuck? <laughs> Dandelion, literally big part of the format, like, enables a lot of broken things to be done in Frogs and Amaryllis, Quick Draw. I can't imagine Amaryllis without this card, man. Yeah, me <clears throat> either. Like, this card, Titanial with two tokens is so intimidating to sit across the table from. Like, what? It's, it's like, what, what else? Is Bottomless and Mirror Force. Yeah, and like, or, random or, things or, like or, Smashing or, 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 Ground. Or, 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 <clears throat> yeah smashing ground <laughs> but like most of the time like cards that are at one or the cards that you just don't really see play that much especially not in like game one like sometimes titanial two tokens and the game is just over yeah i think that's honestly why i like quick draw so much because you have so many options that you can do like you have debris you have the plant engine you have you know you have quick draw dandy but like once titanial comes down and then you get the loop going or like you know, Titanium plus Stardust. Like once you start adding on to that, it's just, it's, it's, it's you just out tempo them so much. Yeah, <clears throat> yep, I agree. Okay, yeah, no, we I can um we can lump uh, these next two together because they're kind of like two pieces. This is King of the Beasts and Moja. 
Yes, yeah. Um, I've seen some very silly, wacky, like, niche builds of that. Like, like people will be like, oh, dude, it's that secret spice. It's that fucking mojo, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it seems very... Uh... It seems very um, situational, that's for sure. <laughs> I've tried. I really wanted to cook like some spicy earth deck, like Moja, uh, Green Baboon, Yellow Baboon, with King of Bios, like every turn you can summon King of the Beasts. <clears throat> and what ends up happening is like your King of the Beasts just gets Kaiast and then your deck doesn't do anything anymore. <laughs> so I've yeah, tried. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen Beast Beat down decks. My friend's playing one right now where it's like, you know, triple green baboon, double double yellow, and like all that shit. He's playing like, like oh, just the uh, the standard art, like giant rat shit with Gaia power and like yeah. all that. And it's fun. And like, don't get me wrong, when the trap cards like really screw you up, like, you know, he'll set Dark Bribe and four other cards and summon a giant rat. And I'm just like, well, fuck, okay, I got to play through back row now. But like, it's not. In a tournament setting, it's not impactful enough. Like it's yeah, people do not understand the power of tribute summon Caius. Okay, exactly, like, exactly. Caius ruins everything. <laughs> Caius ruins dreams in this format. He he does. He ruins dreams entirely. Like any any cool wacky silly deck you were planning on playing and you know pulling one over on somebody, nah, Caius. <laughs> like, yeah, dream is dead. Too good. I feel like I don't think they're dirt because they are playable to some extent, but I feel like probably definitely like mud pie. Oh, for sure. Mud pie. Okay. Moja and King of the Beasts both going into mud pie. All right. Ancient Gear Engineer. Why is he level five? Why 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 is he level five? Like I <laughs> like <laughs> you you went from oh this effect is pretty good. Oh I'm level five. I mean, I I get that. He, oh, it's Gear Town. Yeah, I could just normal summon. Okay, whatever, fine. If you have Gear Town, like, yeah. But, but like, if you don't have Gear Town, yeah, he's just a brick. He's just a fucking brick. <laughs> like, I'd much rather have Ancient Gear Beasts. That card is stupid in every way possible. <laughs> Ancient. Let me tell you a story about Ancient Gear Beast, man. And this is kind of jumping the gun a little bit. I'll actually move these up together so we can talk about. Uh, Ancient Gear Beast and Golem next. When I was first learning to play Edison, I really loved playing X Sabers. And I kept getting matched up against Ancient Gears, man. And th oh, this guy I'm would sorry. hit the board, run over my rat, <laughs> run like over my Embers Blade. Embers Blade. He was hitting yes, your Embers and I'm like, Blade and be like, oh, I can't do anything. I'm like, this matchup is unwinnable. This is abysmal. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I play this a hundred times and I win one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, These guys. Is crazy the, yeah, yeah the negate the battle traps aspect is very intense in like once again in a simplified game state it is very hard to overcome like yeah you gotta have something something playable or else this deck just out tempos you way too much like all it needs is one turn to kind of just go off and like you know you don't really see it you know up in the top tables at all like i remember when i first built you know, a couple decks for my locals. I went and I built an ancient gear machine deck because it, it is what topped in 2022. So I was like, okay, cool, we'll do this. Now, obviously, the format was still, you know, early into exploration with like being newly found or not found, but rather like resurfaced and popularized. But ancient gear beast is just ugh, that card, man. It's it's revive King Hades with 450 less attack points. Yeah. Like, it's it's dumb it's yeah. treeborn frog no battle monster effect no <laughs> like it's yeah it's great and i love that it's permanent the fact that it's permanent is what screws people up like i swung into my friend's necro gardener the other day with revive king uh, you know or i'm gonna consider them the same card at this point because they pretty much are <laughs> like and he was like oh uh, necro gardener effect and i'm like you can't He's you like, can't Why? he is permanently <laughs> negated unless you <laughs> Like Move banish him. it for Let's sorcerer, it yeah. Banish it from sorcerer and like burial, burial it back. It back. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that seems like a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, to stop one attack, you're probably already dead. Yeah. Uh, no, okay, I, I like so... talking about all the ancient gears together for sure. Um, <laughs> Do you I think... think engineer is dirt? Um... <laughs> you think he's dirt? Okay, I was going to say probably boulders conflicted. His his spell and trap pop effect can be relevant at times. I can feel that. Yeah. Well, so here, here's my whole thing. I agree with that point, but at the same time, ancient gear, what are they known for? 
not letting your shit activate. So it's that like, is true. That's true. What you want to do mud <clears throat> pie with engineer? I think with engineer, yes. I think okay. with um, I, I think mainly just because of its the fact that you have to have gear town to do something with it, kind of thing. Like you're not going to tribute summon your monster on the field for for a fifteen hundred attack, fifteen hundred defense monster. Like yeah, what are you what are you trying to pop? Oh, you're trying to pop skill drain. Well, that was pointless. Like <laughs> yeah, like it's true. You could pop future future like because you cause you got to think like what is gonna be like a threat to you when you're playing this deck it's probably something that's already face up so what is it and then you start asking yourself what stays face up <laughs> it's kind of hard yeah. to think besides future fusion <laughs> that is true ancient gear beast i feel like is definitely this rocks this card is crazy oh, for sure yeah he's great he's a great card ancient gear golem <laughs> on the other hand i feel like is dirt due to the fact he cannot be special summoned yeah, it's annoying. Like, the only way you're special summoning him is if H Ultimate Agent Gear Golem gets destroyed. Like, that's the yeah. only way. You can I really wish that, like, conditions. this guy and Gajillatron Dragon's, like, restrictions were swapped. Because it would just be so much cooler to Gear Town and Ancient Gear Golem. I don't know why, but... I agree with you completely. Mechanized melee all day, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Did you see that there was a guy at the last YCS that was like 6-0 with I Ancient Gears? Did I see that there was a guy? Of course, bro. <laughs> it was the talk of the town. Fucking, that, dude, the opponent literally grabbed the card, read it, looked at the camera, and said, Are you reading this? Was... I, I clicked on the stream because someone's like, Hey, there's an Ancient Gear guy. <laughs> I looked and saw he was like 5-0, and then I saw Ancient Gear Fusion activate, and I was like, I'll check back in a minute. Like, 10 minutes later, I check back, and they're done playing. He just demolished this guy. Dude, for real. Like, he just went in. I was just like, oh, this is awesome. And now fucking the, the Fortress. Fortress is already, like, 15 bucks because it only has one printing. But, yeah. like, after that, it became, like, a $25 common. I was just like, oh, yep, that's classic Yu-Gi-Oh! buyout right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. You think Gajillatron Dragon is this rocks as well? Um, <clears throat> I, so here's my thing. We're supposed to be going based off of what the card is as a whole, you know? That's but true. My favorite thing that I've noticed about this card is the way that you could splash Gear Town Gadgetron into so many things is freaking awesome. Like, one of my favorite decks in the whole format that never sees play really is Assault Mode. And a lot of people use Gear Town Gadgetron for that deck. There's also some wacky, like, Machina hero builds that I've seen that do it. Like, it's, it's really, really cool the fact that you could splash it into things because of the fact that you could summon it off Gear Town and you could summon it from anywhere. Um, I think it has a lot of versatility in that sense. So it makes me want to put it higher. And it also, you know, it has the, it has the same clause that all the other ancient gears do, which is the battle traps and spells are freaking useless. Screw you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you want to put him in earth shattering? No, no. I mean, I, I think this rocks is, I think this rocks is fine, honestly. Okay. Um, only because of its, its viability in the sense of like what people do with it. Like, you know, you can run this in a mausoleum deck. You can run this and something like wacky and give it like that extra edge. I think that it has a lot of room for experimentation and, and, and it's been shown that it does as well. That's why I like it so much. It's like you, that package is splashed into so many things that actually becomes somewhat impactful. It's definitely a, a sleeper, if you would. Yeah, I can agree with that. Okay. All right. Next up, we have Express Roid. <laughs> oh, the roids. <laughs> yeah. No, doesn't see a lot of play. There was that one wacky Machina deck that played Express Roid and uh, Ar Armor Roid. Is that the big guy? Looks like a Transformer. Yeah, yeah. The big old, the big old thing. So... Here's what I think. I don't want to be a hypocrite here, but you know we're supposed to be basing card of, off of what they do, like just just morally what they do. But his effect, just generically, is freaking honestly pretty good. <laughs> like when yeah, this card it is. is summoned, you could just add two roids back from your graveyard. Like, <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah. He, where do you where do you think? Like he doesn't really see play it's like it's it's like i, I gotta consider all the aspects of the situation i don't yeah. think that he's bad i don't think he's dirt i think maybe a higher like a high mud pie a high mud pie okay 
I, I, th that's a that's a sentence I never thought would ever come out of my mouth. <laughs> Hi, mud pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think mud pie as well. Good spot for him. Okay. Uh, okay. So next we have Gladiator Beast Darius. This rock. Yeah, it's definitely this rock. It, it might it, also it, it could be earth shattering. Yeah, no, he could be. I mean, all of the GB monsters, they're just they, 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 like, like, with the exception of like a couple that no one plays, they all have their place. And like, while I do not like the deck, what is the reason that I don't like the deck? <laughs> it wins. <laughs> and yes. it wins really well if you're a good player with it. If you're a good pilot, you could take this deck to the moon, bro. Yeah, I actually think he's earth shattering. This card single handedly enables like Prisma Test Tiger. I will I will give you that. Yeah. Um I think it's groundbreaking in that sense. Groundbreaking or shattering, whatever you want to call it. He's he does what he's supposed to do for his boys, his other GBs. Yeah. He brings him back, gives him a second chance. Hundred percent. Okay. All right. Uh so next up we have red, green, and yellow gadget. These are all lumped up into just one card here. So this is my this is the same dilemma that I have with like Gear Town plus Gadgetron. It's like splashable. Um, like I've seen very weird gadget lists, and they were also something that was like no one can deny that people were playing gadgets back then. Like even when Edison, like you know, like I said, when it, once it got more popularized, like the first couple decks that I saw talk, like from like EdisonFormat.com, etc., I saw a couple gadget lists because people were still like respecting it, even. This is a shout out to my friend uh, Trenton Scott. Like I was playing him at a Raleigh last year at Nats, and he was playing <laughs> Gadget Machina, and he, he didn't know that limiter removal was at one. <laughs> oh no! Has a field full of gadgets, <laughs> and he goes limiter removal. I'm like fuck, and he goes second limiter removal. I was like whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, sir, sir, calm <laughs> down. <laughs> it was so good. Um, but I, I definitely, I, I see people. He was out for it, blood, know. man. Yeah, no, well, so here's my thing. You know, everyone knows who M. Cole 40 is, you know, the, the yeah. Mr. Gadget. Like, I mean, he didn't get that from, he didn't get to that point by not playing the deck. You know, it, it, it has some sort of relevancy to some point. Um, and that's what I love so much about Edison is you could play anything that you want and do well with it. Literally pretty much anything you want it could be the stupidest thing in the world you could like main deck ancient forest or whatever or do black garden shenanigans whatever it is and you can have some sort of success with it um a lot of people say that's because you know it's it's for players who don't know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I, I disagree with that entirely i think that this is a format for explor exploration and i think gadgets fit right into that so i mean i, I would put them like a solid like probably the boulder is conflicted because like there's arguments to both sides. A lot of people say it's too slow, and then other people are like, oh, I think it's I think it's just fine. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. Another earth shattering card trooper. Oh god. So good. Man, card trooper's so free. Like in Vayu, in pretty much whatever he's in, that like you just can you know, it meshes with the graveyard well. Like it, whatever it is. Like yeah, this guy is like just such a good catch all. Like, gets under bottomless, doesn't care about Ryko, mills, draws. Like, it's no wonder this card stays at one for matches, a long matches time. Ryo, matches Ryo, which is a yeah. really big thing. Matches Alias. Like, like, sure. Yeah. Why not? Uh, Jim and I spark my card trooper. Please do it. I Please. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I wish this guy, well, I, I guess I'm biased because I'm a Light Sworn player, but I wish this guy was at more than one. But I know it would be super toxic if it was. <coughs> troop doop scoop <laughs> yes uh, yeah you know how weird it format. is to walk by a table and see a card trooper on the field but then also watch someone goyo Machine guardian about two more <laughs> goyo guardian another card trooper and you're like what is going on why are there oh, two card oh, troopers god. on the field bro that would be oh my god i, I want to see that now <laughs> that would be so great that happens uh, sometimes in light sworn mirrors with lumina when you goyo take their lumina use it to bring back your lumina you're like man this this is nice. <laughs> I'll do this all yeah, day. Like, I have two luminas. This is like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah, no card yeah. troopers are shattering. Uh, the draw one is fantastic. I, I can't even imagine how stupid the card would be if it just said if this card is sent to the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. 
This is like, one of my favorite cards. Sick to, to summon, draw one. <laughs> yeah, I love to summon this guy beside JD. Like nuke the field, get to draw a card for free. It's so nice. Yeah, then you just mill wolf. Awesome, sick. All right. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think I won. Um. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so earth shattering for him. Next up is giant rat. Man, um, really cool. Honestly, like I mean, like we we. Whenever we have done these lists, I'm pretty sure we always kind of put recruiters kind of just like right in the middle, you know, besides yeah. Pyramid Turtle, who's coming up, um, who's absolutely stupider than any other recruiter, pretty much. <laughs> um, uh, I uh, I think Giant Rat is like right in the middle. I think that he's a, a conflicted one uh, or I mean, very low. This rocks because like he is a great card. Um he does what he does well and you know you can summon really fun things off of him a lot of people don't think about it they're like oh an earth monster with 1500 or less what can i summon they don't think summon out dandy they don't think summon out card trooper they don't you know what i mean like yeah they don't think summon out do injection it. fairy lily now they do <laughs> bro <laughs> that i love that so much i used to do that in goat and people were just like what hold on excuse me <laughs> i'm like yeah yeah and and now it's gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, now you're getting hit for 3,400. It's wonderful. It's awesome. Um, I just I, I love recruiters as a whole. They're honestly so cool. Like crashing one and just killing your opponent's monster and then still getting one after is just like wonderful. Yeah, that's why I love creature swap so much with those because it's like I this is so free. It could not be freer. And it's damage step. So screw you, royal oppression. Yeah, my monster is coming out for sure. Yeah. Okay, XX Saber Hunley. Needs a reprint. That's that. It does. It does. That. First and foremost, needs, needs a reprint. A reprint. It, it's a thirty dollar card. It needs a reprint. <laughs> um, she's cool. I love that she has up two on her text. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Either player. Uh, it sucks. Yeah, it's it sucks that she can't um do anything else. Like it sucks that she's vanilla after she hits the field. But you know, you can't really say that and be like a card is bad because of it because look at the monarchs look at how stupid they are just for what they are yeah. um so i mean i definitely think she's good i think she rocks honestly it's yeah, what the deck, so the deck definitely needs it like i the amount of times i think someone's gonna go into brio or goyo and then they go for this to clear the back row i'm like huh, you know what this acts that's actually like pretty okay like that's fine yeah if you're playing a trap deck and you're playing against x sabers and they drop cold wave you know what's coming it's not going oh, to be 100%. good yeah, no. She's cool. I like her a lot. Okay. Oh, God. Next card. Let's go. Oh. So, oh. Gaia, Gaia played the Earth Giant. Man. <laughs> He's so cool. Like, when I, saw, when I saw this card, like, actually start being played, I was like, let's go. I'm, I'm here for this so much. And then I believe, yeah, I believe he did get a reprint recently. He um, did. He got a reprint out of the last Speed Duel set. Yeah, which is which is awesome. Um, I hate that it's mandatory, but like it is what it is. Um, he as a card is just he's earth shattering in many ways, physically and metaphorically. <laughs> um, you know, in in the dark guy builds in dark rock heroes, wh whatever you want to call them. My friend calls him black rock shooter. I uh, like whatever you want to call the deck. Um, he's fantastic at it. Like he works so well, and he's such a force to be reckoned with. Like, because people don't expect the second one either. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, "All right, I got rid of that. Okay, cool, we're done." Nah, <laughs> you got the second yeah. one coming down. And bro. then they like they banish Dinah off of this, then activate release from Stone, bring back Fossil Dinah. Yep. I, if we were doing a trap tier list right now, bro, I would biasly put a release from Stone way too high. <laughs> But, like, I, I love that card. I love this card. I love what that deck does in tandem. Can we just get like, hustled? There's really no way there were 70. I, I personally think it's a very earth shattering card for what it's it does. It's it, it relentless. Yep. And it's, you have to answer it. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Some random ad on this page just started talking a second ago. I don't even know what was going on. <laughs> like a video game commercial or something. Okay. So, Gaia Plate definitely goes in earth shattering just the the earth chaos monster yes okay so next up we have dd warrior lady's cousin dd warrior it's the first one apparently like canonically speaking um yeah. 
it's like he walked not, so Dee Dee Warrior Lady could run. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm really conflicted on this one, and I don't mean put it in conflicted <laughs> because of it, but like it just, it's just. It's just DD assailant, but lower attack. Like it gets over, it gets over under bottomless. You know, like that's yeah. cool. And but, it comes out off of giant rat, which is nice at times. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like to our point of relevancy, if something is fifteen hundred or under, we're gonna be like, well, you can also summon it off giant rat. That's, that's <laughs> like, true. That is that true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think he's cool. Um, I have not once in my life ever seen someone play him though. <laughs> Like, I don't. I, I can't even recall one time. <laughs> I don't um, think I can either. I don't think he's dirt. I I will give you that because, like, theoretically speaking, this is just another battle phase off of a recruiter exploder dragon type situation. Like, yes, you're gonna take damage, but one of the best things about DD Warrior Lady is that it outs literally any monster in the format except for Contester. Like, yeah. Or well, Grand Mole, but like, like you know, the, the two two cards out of a whole format. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure yeah, there's probably good. like something somewhere else that it, it doesn't work. But like, y- you get what I mean. Like, it's it's its effect is generic and it's good. Yeah, I think he can go in mud pie. Yeah, I'm cool with that. All right, now we have DD Warrior Lady. What? I'm sorry, not DD Warrior Lady. <laughs> We've been talking about DD Warrior Lady. We have Injection Fairy Lily up next. DD Warrior like, Lady. You were like, you're like flipping through the script. You're like, what's happening? What's going on? He's gone off script. <laughs> like, that's a light monster. What is he doing? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Injection uh, Fairy Lily. Okay. Um, for what the card is, you know, take away the fact of what format we're in. Like, let's say, like, we're in slower, form, like, something something like GOAT. Like, you put it in any situation, in any application where you need to get over something big, and it'll come through for you. Um, you know, you can't stop it with Bottomless. You know, it's it's really cool to summon off a recruiter, like we were talking about before. Um, I think that the price is a little bit steep, so I'm not going to put it super, super high. I love the fact that it gets summoned in the anime. That's really cool. Um, but... I, as far as like it seeing play, I've only recently started to see it be a thing inside decks, and it's like really weird decks play. Like I saw it in a six Sam's side deck, and I was just like, "Huh, interesting." <laughs> like, that is interesting. That's very weird. <laughs> um, What's he cooking? Yeah, for real. Like, what is he cooking? I want to know. Um, I think that the card does rock, but I think that there's an argument to me be made for both sides. So I would say the boulder is conflicted. Okay, I'm down with that. Okay. So next up, we have Elemental Hero Woodsman. Okay. So hated this card probably forever, and I haven't hated it because it's bad. I've hated it because no one plays it, and I want to see it play. And also, you can't give me a card like a hero lives and me not want to see the card that's on the freaking image, okay? Like, <laughs> it's not cool. Yeah. Like, why, why you got to take that from me? <laughs> um, but recently on Carpath's channel, it, it makes me so angry because you, you go and, like, look for the list and then no one posted it. It's, they just sent in a replay. You have to go to his Discord and track it down and, like, post publicly and be like, yo, who has the list that I just saw? We still have not gotten this one, and I want this list so bad. But he was playing an Elemental Hero Terra Firma Turbo deck. Ooh. And, you know, it's really cool because you're running Ocean, you're running Woodsman, you're running Voltic, you know, you're still running Ab Zero. Like, it, it, it won the matches that, you know, the, of course it won the matches of the replay that it sent in because you want to give, like, some sort of good impression in that sense. But it, it abused the hell out of Woodsman, though. And that's what was so cool, like... Adding Polly is just really fun. <laughs> it is fun. I remember seeing uh, Rognak play Hero Frogs with this card, and it was cool because, like, they'd attack your set Woodsman, it flips up, Treeborn comes back, you search Polly, and you just make hard make AZ, which is kind of neat. I did not see him play this, so that's actually really cool. I'll have to look into yeah, that. Yeah, I um, think he was probably, really I think cool. he was the first one to play it, and he also played Inverse Universe in the same deck. Oh wow, that's kind of crazy. Okay, um, I him having two K defense though really makes it like like 
you're going against a hero player. They set something. Okay. Your opponent's not going to be like, oh, that's a woodsman. Like, like it's, yeah. it's not going to happen. Said no one ever. Oh, that's a woodsman. <laughs> it's like, that did not happen. Go to attorney. Oh, I, I'm playing this dude who's playing heroes. Damn, I wonder what the set card is. Hmm, it's a Ryko. It flips, woodsman. What? <laughs> what? What does this card yeah, do? The, there's a more likely chance of someone saying, normal summon, wild heart. <laughs> Then, there is. Then, yeah, there absolutely then is. This, then someone guessing that you have this face down. Also, Wild Heart, criminally underrated card. Uh, it's coming up, and I love that card to death. Being unaffected by traps comes up, and no one can tell me any different. But yeah, Woodsman's cool. Um, I think he rocks, but I would still put him in the conflicted category because like, while he is good, he's not good enough to see consistent play. Like, No one wants to run Polymerization in their deck, and if they did, they'd probably just run King of the Swamp. So it's like at their ease and an easy way to get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. All right. Uh, so next up we have Doomdozer. I, Demise OTK. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, yeah, Demise OTK. I, like, I, I hear Doomdozer. That's all I think about. Um, it's a it's a cool card. Uh, it's, you know, it's... I'm a, I have been waiting to say this, like, on a video so far. It has that old Yu-Gi-Oh flair. Like, it's got, like, the, you know, the summoning condition of, like, a lot of monsters that were printed within, like, the first, like, 10 sets. And it's, like, I know that's a broad spectrum, but, like, you know what I mean. Like, you know, Spirit of Flames, you know, Aqua Spirit, Rock Spirit, like, all those, like, Banish 1 special. This one's just a little bit different. It's, you know, you Banish 2 instead. Um, yeah. But I really like the mill effect a lot. Um, <clears throat> I think it's interesting that most of the mill effects, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but all of the mill effects within this, you know, from, from the beginning all the way to Edison, they're all mandatory. Like Goblin Zombie, mandatory. This, mandatory. Iron Chain Dragon, mandatory. Like they're all, you have to do them. Which That's is true. I haven't actually even thought about that really. Yeah, it's like, why, where's the you can, bro? Like, what if I don't want them to send the cards? <laughs> yeah, where's the option? Uh, for real, like, I know they stacked the wolf. No! <laughs> uh, but um, I think this card is fine. Um, it's 2,800 is 2,800, man. Like, period. Like, it's, it's 2,800. Yeah, it's um, big boy. I feel like in the deck that you'd play this in, it wouldn't really be a brick, though. Like, if you're going to play this, you're probably going to play an insect deck. So I feel like it's always going to be live. And, I mean, if we're looking at it like that logic and, you know, you can do something wacky in Edison, like play a you know, really niche deck and just have, you know, traps and spells that everybody else plays so you can blow out your opponent still, or especially like Cold Wave, you could OTK with this thing. Like, it isn't once per turn, you could freaking summon two of them. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's true. Um, I think, I think, I think it's a mud pie card. Um, I don't, I don't think it's good enough to have an argument to it in the sense of like, oh, well, this is why you should play this card. You know what I mean? Like most of the cards we're going to put in the conflicted category is here's why you should play it. But like this, I, you have to play an insect deck, bro. Like, <laughs> like yeah. this, I'm not going to say it's bad because it's not bad. It's just like, it's, it's mediocre a good way of explaining it okay all right next up we have morphing jar earth shattering definitely earth shattering <laughs> when this card flips sometimes it just decides like the outcome of the game yeah no um all the way from goat to now uh cards crazy you know jeff jones is jeff jones man like <laughs> morphing jar like yeah uh I, you know, I'm biased. Bakura is my favorite character of all time. I love Morphing Jar. I have, you know, Mauricio from the groups freaking uh, the Morphing Jar keychain on my on my on my key ring. So, I mean, yeah, that's I, awesome. I love this card to death. It's probably my favorite Ultra in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because the, the Ultra is one thing. One, I've never been able to have it because I just don't have that kind of money to shell out on one card. And two, it just it's so disturbing. The artwork is so disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, that card always reminds me kind of of the Cheshire Cat. I could, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that, and then, like, they go watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and see, like, how, like, I don't know if you've ever watched, but, like, the episodes it appears, it extends like a worm, bro. Like, it comes out of the jar. Ew. No, I haven't seen yeah. that. 
bro it's it's it's, it's it's like it's like imagine like like gray skinned homer simpson coming out of a jar with that face. <laughs> it's, it's wild um, Ew. it's definitely it's definitely nightmare fuel um <laughs> very cool card though yeah um I did, uh, the impact that it has just like my friend the other day, he he was waiting on a couple cards in the mail, and instead of playing Rageki Break because he only had two and he wanted to get three, he was like, "I'll just throw in Morphing Jar," and he's playing it in Frogs, and I was like, "This is weird." And then like I watched him proceed to four games in a row, just decimate people by setting the card because they were like, "Oh, it's a dupe Frog. What do I do?" <laughs> yeah, it turns out to just be Morphing Jar, <laughs> bro. It's like once again, no one goes. Uh, what does that set? Oh, that's a morphing jar. No one says that. Yeah, it, you, you'd never say that. You'd say something like, hmm, that's Woodsman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe they morphing jar into their copy of Woodsman. Yeah, that's a fact. That's that's what happens. What's he cooking? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see, what, what's, our, what's our time arriving on right now? Uh, let's see. We're about 40 minutes. So if you're watching this video, we're going to stop close to the hour mark and cut this into two parts um so this is part one of the earth tier list just because there are so <clears throat> many earth monsters this is the monster i've been wanting to talk about this whole entire video i po posted in the edison group well the time wizard group uh the other day and i said what is the most iconic monster in edison format and the top five answers i got were absolute zero caius Ryko dad slash jd drill warrior slash dandy slash quick draw yeah and the majority being caius and drill warrior and ab zero um but drill warrior is not respected enough and that is because quick draw is a very 50 50 deck hand advantage is everything in that deck if you loot i don't know if you know but if you lose your advantage in that deck and you don't top the avarice or you don't have a way to get it back and keep your loop going the deck is easily weeded out and does not make it to the top tables because like you you need consistency and the one thing that that lacks is the fact that Ryko is he's a miller and you can't control what you mill sometimes you lose your really good cards i, I can't tell you how many times it sucks to play the deck and i you know i mill with Ryko and my I, I i mill mirror force heavy storm and then my opponent's like well don't gotta worry about those for the rest of the game like yeah exactly <laughs> it, it sucks <laughs> but Drill Warrior as a card, regardless of, you know, how the deck performs, he is ridiculous. One of, like, anytime I talk to someone about playing Diva Hero, they're like, oh, I don't really worry about Quick Draw. And I'm like, how do you not, if you don't have trap cards when this thing comes down and you keep not getting into traps or unable to kill your opponent, it it's a win condition in itself. It, like, half my attack, swing directly, banish myself, two more dandy tokens. Oh, you didn't draw a trap again? Cool summon back half my like it just keeps going you have seven yeah turns. it just seven snowballs turns like to kill them this is one of the worst matchups for light sworn i've ever played against specifically because of what you just said because you don't have traps to stop it and you'll never get to attack it exactly and, and not only that but people don't realize that if you choose to add back a monster with his effect you cannot activate torrential or bottomless in response to his summon I see people activate those cards 24-7 on this thing returning to the field after they're adding back a monster. And you cannot do that. The last thing to happen is you adding back a monster, not his yeah. summon. Yeah, him playing through Torrential Bottomless is really crazy. Dude, it, it's wild. And there are so many other like small applications too. But like the most satisfying feeling in the world is just I have the dandy loop going. And of course, you know, they're eventually going to stop ta attacking the tokens. Sick. I'm going to add back the Bree Dragon now. I probably just freaking won. Like, yeah. It, it's stupid. Add back Caius. Add back DD. Your sidecars. Add back DD Crow. Add back Fossil Dino. Whatever you got, man. Like, it's, it's honestly so cool. Like, it's, it's such a good card. I think it is earth shattering in every way. The things that this card does, like, it's, you can't say it's bad. It's such a good card. Yeah, I've always wanted to try to find a way to get this card into Light Sworn. I've been unsuccessful. It probably never will be successful, but just the thought of having Monster Reincarn every single turn has been like very it's appealing disgusting. to me. It's like it's crazy. Like, like oh, I, this I turn I'll add back. 
Honest. Here's my thing. You're talking about splashing this into Light Sworn. This card is so good and so slept on besides, like, two decks. I, I totally think that it is worth your time to do so. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's just it's it's so good. And and quick draw, you can splash into a bunch of different things. I've seen quick draw frogs. I've seen quick draw heroes. Quick draw machina tends to make a splash sometimes. Like it's it's not bad. It's I I, I love this card wholeheartedly. It's, it's yeah. you say it's whole entire spirit in one card. <laughs> besides yeah. you know besides Stardust. All right. Uh, so next up we have evil hero malicious fiend or edge dude. It's people don't expect this when you drop it. Like if they know you're playing hero frogs, maybe they expect it. But when you do, and then they're like, "Oh fuck, it has piercing," I it it wins games, dude. It really late game this card wins games. And like if you haven't already like sent it off of future fusion or something else. But yeah, it's it's really good. Like it's it's a good card. The fact that you can only use one monster as a tribute is great. What do you think? You think this rocks? Yeah, I think it rocks. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like say it's earth shattering, but it's it, it's it definitely rocks. It's a good card. Um, I can't see you know m m running more than two copies ever. But, you know, even if you're playing like Dark Gaia Heroes, like I think two is the number. But yeah. Okay. All right. So next up, we have Quillbolt Hedgehog, one of the cutest cards in the format. It's really cool. Um, you know, like when I was first playing. Yu-Gi-Oh, like, you know, 2009, 2010, you know, I was playing this on my deck, so I, you know, I, I wanted to be Yusei, oh, I got somebody, gotta have the Junk Synchro, gotta have the Quill Bolt, gotta have the Speed Warrior, all that shit. Um, I think he's very underutilized, but at the same time, it's, it's really hard to find the room. Like, he's yeah. not bad by any means, but he's just not played enough. And, 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 and the fact that you you have to control a tuner is like, all right. I mean, like what situation is it going to come up where I don't control a tuner, but well, like in this, in the same sense, it's like, there are going to be turns where you don't. So he's just a sitting duck until you get one sort of type thing. Yeah. Do you think, you think the boulders conflicted for this guy? I think that he's breakable and the reason that I think it's breakable is because nowhere on this card does it say once per turn. Yeah, that is true. You can get like some uh, mass driver iron wall action, you know? <laughs> yeah, or like some synchro climbing, etc. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think the boulder is conflicted. Uh, like a very low boulder is conflicted because it's, it's almost mud pie, but it's like it has a lot of utility to it. And I'm... I'm sure someone will do something with it, just like tuning wear has been seeing play recently. So yeah. All right. Next up, we have yet another Earth Shattering. Bro, I keep uh, getting this subway pop up. <clears throat> what the heck? It keeps like flashing. <laughs> it's trying to tell you something. Ten dollar footlongs. That. Like I'm gonna have to put not safe for work on this one if this keeps happening. <laughs> so that's I don't so know. Good. Well, I don't know how to stop all these pop ups. If you're watching this, tell me how to, to stop these. It's, it's telling you to get that, uh, you know, uh, turkey foot long with capicola, cucumber, jalapenos, lettuce, tomato, oil, Ooh. vinegar, salt, and pepper, and oregano. Dog, that's my order right there. Dude, I'm getting hungry. I need you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, rest, so we have <clears> five dollar foot long. I mean, rescue cat. <laughs> I wish it was five dollar foot long. God, take me back. Um, but me too, rescue take cat. Me back. Um, the fact that we get to play this card with this unerotted text, uh, full power rescue cat, you know, I mean, it's at one, of course, for good freaking reason, but the card is just so stupid. Like, it's so good. Like, it, it I've, I've seen people play it in so many different things. I didn't think it would be played in. Like, I saw, uh, my, my friend David, um, he runs the who needs meta youtube channel and they were who i first really started like watching when i first like got back into edison and he loves synchro cat decks so he will constantly like mix things with them he actually got top 16 at um at indie with um mocking a cat and it was really really cool to see that um because I, I watched him play the whole day and the, the plays that you can do with this card 
like people don't really consider all the things that you can do and it's it's really cool honestly like i love the uh i love when people love uh run summoner monk i see that a lot in um x savers like a lot of the x saber lists i've seen they run summoner monk discard a card special out rescue cat summon two um two airbellums and you know you can make a freaking arcanite magician for free and then yeah, like, whatever true. else you want it's it's really cool um <clears throat> i mean not uh, not not much else blah, 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 blah. not much else not mud else see mud pie <laughs> not not much else can uh <laughs> can be said really it's it's just such a such a good card like it's earth shattering in every way it's free it's it's just literally free uh tribute for cost fuck you like <laughs> yeah you can do nothing to me <clears throat> yeah, all right wonderful. uh so next we have the best boy shiva warrior taro I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it played in a deck, but it was Kazuki's, you know, favorite, you know, it, it was his dog. Like, it was that was the guy, man. Um, yeah. I think just for the simple fact of respecting his honor, we got to throw it in Earth Shattering, bro. Like, it's like you can't, you can't disrespect the Shiba. He's the hero, he's the protagonist. He's the like, yeah. Earth Shattering. All right. The top of Earth Shattering. Shout yeah. outs, and, uh, and the next the... and the next one too. The next one is so earth shattering. <laughs> I'm almost getting pissed off thinking about the times that I've had it used against me. <laughs> yes, like, let me go ahead and it's... just say, like Tom <laughs> Mac, if you're watching this, the North remembers this man. Grand mold me out of YCS <laughs> Richmond, sent me packing, dude. <laughs> Card is so good. Listen, I have. I, listen, I have five decks. Okay, I have Instant Fusion Zombies. I have Diva Hero. I have Quick Draw, just because. I have um, a diva zombie deck, like a like a loner deck for people to use, like when they're starting to like get in Addison. And I want to like kind of show them the basics. And then I have Value Turbo. Every single side deck has a copy of Grand Mole. Uh. <laughs> so good, bro! It's so <laughs> good. Gosh, like both times I, I love... played Tom Mac, I opened triple Ryko in our game three. And this man opened up Grand Mole and just Grand Mold me into oblivion. Sent me back to the Stone Ages. It's, it's just, I, not only do I love the card, but my favorite character, Bakura, his voice actor, Ted Lewis, voices the only time that Grand Mole talks. And the, the line is, get this, it's like, he's like a, a New Yorker, like, or like a mafia, like, like, uh, subordinate. And he goes, okay, boss. <laughs> like, that's, that's all he says <laughs> that's it <laughs> he's, he's goaded in every way yeah this card i actually just recently learned that this card when it came out it was already limited i did not know that but i'm not shocked three of these things screw that i would quit Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah yeah shouts to sasha egger he knows basically everything about like historical Yu-Gi-Oh, and he filled me in on that card being at one from release, which I, I didn't know. Cause like you always think like cards just come out at three and then they go to two or they go to one or they get banned. But for a card to just immediately drop and just be like, okay, you can have one copy of this. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, he, I don't think we'd he, ever uh, see that nowadays. <clears throat> no, I mean, he, he really knows what he's talking about. Uh, funny story there. Um, never knew him by name, only knew him as like the person that I would see constantly at events, like whether it be at the side deck or whatever. So really good relationship with him in person had no clue that was his name until the other day in the chat and i was like oh my god it's him okay gotcha <laughs> <laughs> that's a, the it's a small world you know it is it truly is <clears throat> all right what do we got next uh, is it dark right. guy it looks like yep evil hero dark gaia <sighs> card is so powerful um you can do so much damage like so much like it is the card itself it, you know facilitates ftks in every way or the ftk otks like yeah definitely not a card you ever want to see drop against you no the um the just the fact that like flip effects are not activated at this time who who at konami was just like nah we don't like raiko today put it yeah, out. yeah like nah <laughs> this card's immune to raiko like haha nice who threw that piece of paper at me you know like <laughs> yes for real i was like oh no uh that shit that face down 
that's a morphing jar. I don't want that to happen. Come in Dark Gaia. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, bro. It's, it's, it's a great card. Um, it has, considering it has a whole deck based around it. Like, I, I don't put this anything less than earth shattering probably um him being the boss monster of the whole deck and the fact that like you can not you can control more than one just like ab zero and that's really cool it's like a i'm not going to say it's anything comparable because their effects are completely different but if you're just going for the aggro aspect like you will kill your opponent so quick with this card like you go against something like quick draw or something like mid range, like even X Saber, like what, whatever the case, like, and they're just not doing their best and they're like a little bit behind. You take that little bit behind that they're experiencing and you just turn it into their worst nightmare with this thing. Like, f like what, 5,600 attack points is there, no 5,400 attack points is the normal attack of this when you use Dark Calling most of the time? Yeah, yeah, he gets really <clears throat> big. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, also, can we just talk about the art? What the hell? Like, yeah, this guy is sick looking. Is phenomenal. Like, why do we have a mat with this on it? Like, so good. Yeah, I agree. I love this card. Okay, so we're at 55 minutes. Probably have enough time for a couple more. Next one, we have Gigantes. So, another another David throwback here. Uh, when he was playing in Indy, he was running a singular copy of Gigantes. And when he dropped that shit on his opponent, I was freaking fuming i was like that did not just happen you did <laughs> not just get the the 1900 banished one earth special summon from hand like it's 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 like it's the same league as all the other ones you know like rock spirit spirit of flames aqua spirit all, all that um not as good as you know freed the brave wanderer but um he's uh I think he's like smack dab in the middle. Um, I think the 1900 is extremely relevant. Um, and also like people don't read the card. They'll like swing into it and not realize what it does. Like, do you know what, it, do you know what it does, Boyd? Yeah. If it's destroyed by battle at heavy storms. Correct. And I think people just don't really like understand how much power you have when it comes to that. Like, it's very matchup dependent, but if you're going against something that like say there's no card effect that they can use right now, like like you, you know, your your late game or something, which is when he summoned it, it was late game, and his opponent ended up destroying it by battle because he didn't have another way to, and he had to because it just kept punching him. He lost all his back row. And it's yeah. like that's it does come up. It is relevant. Um so I would say the boulder is conflicted for sure. Um and I, it happens, I think if it had like it happens in the damage step too, so you can't even Starlight Road that. Exactly, exactly. Not only that, um, I, I think that the 1900, once again, is just very, very relevant. Like, if it had less attack points, I think it would be way worse. But the, that 19 stat line is perfect. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's finish so off tonight. Of frame, yeah. Let's finish off tonight by talking about Shiny Black Sea. Pause. Is that actually... What? Hold on. <laughs> what <laughs> set did this come out in? That was on my list? <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I think I added this one. This comes out of Ancient Prophecy, I'm pretty sure. What? Cap. Hold on. <laughs> Your boy gotta check this. This comes out of Ancient Prophecy? I'm pretty sure, yeah. You're telling me that this came out before Max C? <laughs> Let's... Oh my god, you are. Holy crap, bro. This is the first C? The first C. I I know so much about this card because I'm currently I'm not gonna give away too much of the sauce, but I'm currently side decking three of this. When one synchro monster is special summon to your opponent's side of the field, you can remove from play this card and from your graveyard to destroy that one synchro monster. That's pretty sick. That's if it's really good considering Stardust, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's good considering the fact it just said if a, it says if a synchro monster is special summoned, so not synchro summoned. So it, this can be used Yo. against the Vayu stuff as well. Yes, that's actually really saucy, especially for a deck like Lightsworn, where you can really like play with your side deck options. I like that a lot. Like, good on you for that one. That's a that's a smart card, man. Also, yeah. the, the wording, like special summons. That's like that that makes it leagues better than 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 just synchro summon. That's that's really good. Um, yeah. So something that's like... nice against zombies is if they go plague with goblin zombie because this guy is a quick effect it's not a trigger effect and yeah. they go synchro into brio 
you know, obviously they can't prio with Brio because of Goblin Zombie, and you can just chain this and pop their Brio, and they never get a chance to use it. Yeah, that's that, honestly that was the first scenario that popped into my head when I read this. I was like, okay, so it's a win. <laughs> so I'm like thinking, and I'm like, all right, it could possibly miss timing somehow, some way, because there's always a way for something to. But yeah. that's yeah, popping the Brio since you have to mandatorily search with Goblin Zombie. That's that's good. Yeah. I'm a really big fan of this card. I've I've wanted to find ways to make this card work since the very beginning. And I think I finally am on to something. Yeah, I'll definitely have to explore this a little bit more. This is uh it's really cool. I, I also love the, like... the the Duelist League blue version of this card is currently ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents <laughs> on TCG player. So if you have those in your bulk. Call call your job and you can quit work tomorrow. What the fuck? I didn't believe you, so I looked it up. What is happening? Dude, look. Look, I'm cooking, okay? Let me let oh him cook. God, I can't. I don't even know what to say. That's so funny. What the hell? Uh, are we wrapping it up? Well, where do you think this guy should live? And we can wrap it up with this one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Honestly, bro, I think this rocks. You think so? Am I? Am, have I made you a believer in Shiny Black Sea? Absolutely. Not only that, but like the fact that I know now that the cancer that is Max C was not the first. I'm just stoked, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Shiny Black Sea was the original C. C? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and yeah. it's, a, it's an insect monster. So the more you know. Oh, yeah, I'm going to special summon my copy of Doom Dozer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, special him off a of pinch hopper, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we got a little over halfway on this episode, so I think that we made a lot of good ground here. And, yeah, so tune in, tune in on the next episode when we finish ranking the Earth Monsters of Edison. Ethan, anything you'd like to say before we get out of here? uh honestly like i i love doing these so much uh, i'm very excited for the things that we have planned for the future you know unbeknownst to them i'm very excited myself and uh it's just a pleasure being on here i love being able to talk about this game and give my insight you know everyone has an opinion but i love being able to express mine and you know, like just like last time seeing someone comment and agree with something that i was saying or know like that something that i said was something that's happened to them and kind of connect that's what it's all about for me, man. Like I, I love connecting with people and expressing what I'm passionate about and you giving me this outlet to do so is everything to me. So I'm super stoked to continue with the Edison club and all the adventures that we have following us. All right. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.